Hello everyone and welcome to today's DIY. Today we are thrift flipping an unusually shaped object that caught my attention at the thrift store and I'm going to be using it as a cookbook and a laptop holder. I cannot wait to share this with you. It's not only a fabulous before and after but I used a couple of techniques that I know you're going to want to try such as the crackle technique and also creating stripes and using stencils with gilding wax instead of paint which is a game changer and also easy wet distressing with baby wipes. If you are new here, Hello, um, I show up here weekly to offer you DIY inspiration through home decor, thrift flips, and full on furniture painting projects with a big focus on bold color and whimsical style. If this sounds like you, I'd love for you to give a quick thumbs up and let me know that you would like to see more of these videos and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss a thing. Okay, let's get started. This is what I found in Goodwill. I had no idea what I'd use it for or what it was even called, but I love the shape and I found it to just be really intriguing. So I purchased it for $6.99. Once I got it home, I gave it a really good clean with white lightning, which does a great job removing old oils and even deglosses a bit, which are both very important for proper adhesion of your paint. For some reason, I misplaced the footage where I applied the wood you bend molds, but I can tell you that the large 14 inch swag on the front is number X1001 and the two smaller six inch garlands across the back are WB0349. I highly doubt that you have a book holder like this at home, but maybe you'd wanna use those on some other projects that you have around the house. The molds are very, very easy to apply. You just warm them up with a blow dryer or a heat gun. You apply wood glue, which I use tight bond to the backside and you press really well into place and that's it. There's no taping or dry time. You just move right along with the rest of your project. So this is where we are so far. We started with this and then we painted this And then we did this. This is Crackle. And I love it. I know Crackle has been around forever, but it's not a technique that I've done. So I'm gonna show you how I did it. By this time, I'm starting to find my vision for the piece and I decided to go for a cottage shabby look and to use Crackle. I wanted my underlayer to be seen really well and to achieve this best, it's best to use a dark color. So I used Terra Clay Paint and Onyx. I applied a single coat of Onyx over the entire piece and I let it dry. Once dry, I applied Dixie Belle's Crackle Medium on a liberal layer. Please don't skip on this part. If you want big cracks, you need to use enough and then let it dry. Once fully dry, I used Terra Clay Paint in Prairie Dawn. It's sort of a weathered white finish. It's not difficult to do crackle, but you want to do it correctly. Only apply in one direction. Do not go back over an area that you've already painted, and this is why. The crackle magic begins immediately, so once you apply paint, in one stroke, in one direction, and the magic is already happening, and even if you can't see it. So if you swipe back the opposite direction or come back a minute later and swipe it again, you will mess up your crackle and it won't re-crackle. So load your paint heavily, brush it on in one direction until your piece is covered, sit back and just watch. It's absolutely amazing. I had a little crackle magic party. I was so excited. Once this was dry to touch, which didn't take long at all because I used a heat gun to help it along, I began taping off for my stripes pattern. Now don't forget to use a spacer piece of tape when you're laying down your stripe pattern so that they are evenly spaced. With stripes in place, I am ready to paint. And instead of using paint, I chose gold gilding wax for my metallic gold. I choose this for stripes whenever I can because it is so easy. You don't have to burnish your tape because you don't have to worry about bleed through or the paint running under the tape. The wax does not run. Just use a brush that has a flat surface and covers a lot of space. I prefer round ones. Scoop out the gilding wax onto a surface that you can fully blot your brush into. Use a paper plate or a paper towel. Swirl your brush around, offload a little bit onto a paper towel, and then using the offloaded brush begins to stippling or swirling the brush over the paint that is exposed, all of those areas that are exposed. Once done, you just lift your tape up and your stripes are done. I did this on both the front and the back of the book holder. Now for the sides of the book holder, I chose the Harlequin stencil pattern and you can apply it in the same way. Lay your stencil down. You can tape it in place or use stencil adhesive, but I rarely do this. I just hold it in place with my other hand and then using the flat round brush, I simply stipple the gilding wax on or move it in a circular motion until all the exposed painted areas are covered. 
And now for a bit of wet distressing to play into that shabby cottage look that I was going for. Terra clay paint is very easily reactivated with water, so I just use baby wipes. I wipe back the paint in areas where I want to show the color from under, underneath, and in this case, I use the wet distressing on all of the painted rose garlands, rubbing just enough to expose some of the black from underneath. This allows the roses and the cracks from the crackle to make sense, keeping the roses from looking too brand new. Now to seal this beauty to withstand use. The gilding wax areas seal themselves, so I do not need to put a top coat over the stripes or the diamond shapes. I didn't want to dull the shine. Instead, I used Terra Matte Sealer and an artist brush, and I just sealed over the white stripes and the white diamonds only. And here it is, all thrift flipped and gorgeous. I am in love with this adorable whatever it is box. I'm currently using it to display photo books of my daughter Zadie and my grandchildren. It's the perfect size to hold them. It allows me to, to share my cherished photo books with others. I also plan to use it in my kitchen as a cookbook holder. You can also watch closely though because you're likely to see it holding my laptop in future live broadcasts. My final tip for you is this, when you are thrifting, if something speaks to you because of its size or shape, or maybe it jogs a sentimental memory for you, grab it. Whatever it's meant to be will come to you later. I am so glad I didn't pass this one up. That's it. I hope you've enjoyed this, and if you like more videos just like this one, just hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you right here next week with a new project to inspire you. Thank you.